The space station has long been the perfect place to do microgravity research. However, sending experiments and equipment to space is not the only way we can simulate the effects of zero gravity. Hey Space Cats, I'm Dr. Maggie Liu, and recently I made a video on how we can use magnets for zero gravity research. So continuing on from this trend, in this week's video, let's talk about artificial zero G. Microgravity, the near absence of gravity experienced in space, is a fundamental aspect of space travel. When astronauts venture beyond Earth's atmosphere, they experience weightlessness, which can have profound effects on their bodies and the materials around them. Studying humans in microgravity conditions helps us to understand how muscles and bones adapt to weightlessness and how fluids behave in the absence of gravity, as well as helping us to improve training methods for astronauts and in designing their future space habitats. But regardless of whether or not we intend to make humans future space explorers, microgravity can also directly benefit us here on Earth. It can be a powerful tool for studying biological processes like cell growth, protein synthesis, and gene expression. Understanding how these processes function in microgravity can lead to breakthroughs in areas like tissue engineering, drug discovery, and even age research. It can lead to technological advances in material science that are crucial for electronics, optics, and pharmaceuticals, and it can lead to improvements in heat transfer systems and combustion processes. This knowledge can benefit various industries from aerospace engineering to energy production. By simulating microgravity here on Earth, scientists can study these effects in detail without the need to send experiments up to space, which can get very costly. So let's talk about how they do it. Diamagnetic levitation. I talked about diamagnetic levitation in detail in this video, so check it out if you haven't already. But essentially, what you'll need is a superconducting solenoid magnet. The magnetic field generated in the magnet core induces a diamagnetic force on any diamagnetic material, essentially everything. Although I wouldn't take anything actually magnetic near it unless you don't mind losing a limb. This diamagnetic force can counter the effects of gravity when the material is placed in just the right place in the ball. But you're gonna need a pretty big magnet if you wanna float anything bigger than your thumb. So if you want to go big, you'll need to go to a neutral buoyancy facility. Neutral buoyancy happens when an object's average density is equal to the density of the fluid that it's immersed in. And this results in a buoyant force that will perfectly balance the force of gravity. Neutral buoyancy facilities make use of this effect to simulate the weightlessness of space. They're typically very large, very deep pools where astronauts can train for spacewalks and other extravehicular activities in a controlled environment. The pools are generally filled with water and astronauts will wear specialized suits that make them buoyant, mimicking the microgravity conditions. It's right here where they will practice tasks like equipment handling, repairs, and construction in conditions that are similar to what they'll encounter in space. ESA's neutral buoyancy facility in Cologne, Germany holds 3.7 million litres of water, and NASA's neutral buoyancy lab in Houston holds 23 million litres. Unfortunately, these aren't ideal for testing things when you know you can't get them wet, so like electrical hardware. In these cases, we'll probably opt for the next simulated microgravity method. If you want to do your microgravity experiments on something bigger, but don't like the sound of immersing it underwater, then your best bet is a drop tower. Drop towers are essentially giant elevators, typically several hundred meters high. The payloads are secured to a platform, and then this platform is dropped. The payloads undergo free fall for several seconds, so where gravity is the only force acting on it. NASA has a zero gravity research facility in Ohio with a steel vacuum chamber 6.1 meters in diameter and 140 meters tall. The vacuum environment is crucial if you want to remove any air resistance. 
But before you get too excited, there is a catch. What goes up must come down. The payload eventually reaches the bottom of the tower and it will experience a big jolt as it comes to a sudden stop. This brief but very intense g-force might not be ideal for all your experiments, especially those involving very delicate equipment or live organisms. Now, for a much smoother ride, you might prefer a parabolic flight. Parabolic flights use specially modified airplanes that fly a specific path called a parabola. It's like the arc of a roller coaster loop. During this parabolic flight path, the plane essentially climbs and then dives in a specific way that cancels out most of the gravitational forces for a period of time. It's like being in free fall again, but for a much longer duration compared to a drop tower because you can go much higher. This weightlessness period can last anywhere from tens of seconds to even a minute. And the extended microgravity time means that you can test even more complex experiments with the drawback being that it can be quite expensive. Clinostats are a simple but ingenious device that uses rotation to partially negate the effects of gravity. Here you'd place your experiment on a platform which is attached to a motor. And then this motor slowly rotates by constantly changing the direction the sample faces with respect to gravity. The clinosat averages out the gravitational pull. This doesn't quite create a true microgravity, but it significantly reduces the force of gravity on the sample. It's like being gently spun on a merry-go-round. You kind of get dizzy, but you don't feel the constant pull of gravity downwards. The key here is also that it's done slowly to avoid any centrifugal effects. But with this device, you can run much longer microgravity experiments and at a cheap cost. Now, lastly, I wanted to mention Argos, NASA's Active Response Gravity Offload System. To be honest, I wasn't sure what I would list this under, maybe giant human gimbal, but yeah, it's unique. The Argos system is essentially a giant crane device that offloads the weight of a human or the equipment that's attached to it. And this simulates zero gravity, lunar gravity, or even Martian gravity. But this concept is more than just a crane. The system actively tracks and follows the motion using sensors. So for example, if you're walking or jumping, the surroundings will literally lift up or move around to correspond to the action to what would happen if you were actually in those microgravity conditions. Everything you interact with would just be like how it would be in space. A more simple version of this with weights and pulleys was actually used to test the engineering of the James Webb telescope. So there you have it. Even if you can't get to space, there are plenty of ways you can simulate it here on Earth. That's all for me. Thank you to my YouTube Perks members for supporting this video. If you enjoyed it, please don't forget to leave me a like, share and subscribe. Soaring past Mars, unveiling